as I said earlier, with the amazing boop response to take down the support counterpart as this control point starting to become active, but you do have Marist on the low ground trying to manage this onslaught of damage from Matt, at least able to take that Junkrat down, but Baby Diva just trying to get back in this mech. Baby Diva needs to get back into this mech in order to provide what she does best, which is that damage reduction. But damage is just going to be coming through, especially when you can't block those hooks. And there is that follow through. Broccoli with the melee doing some consistent work with Goo on the front. The triple by the Roadhog play and demonstrating how critical that play is. This is where we see Quinnipiac shine. Now that the Orisa and the Roadhog have taken control of this point, it's going to be very difficult for Marist College to break through the defenses. Orisa and Roadhog specifically are just very defensively favored as a composition. So the fact that Quinnipiac was able to take control first means that Marist College is going to have their work cut out for them coming back. They don't really have um, too many resources to utilize yet, but this McCree is going to want to try to get these shields down in order to utilize this Deadeye. Now the Deadeye comes out now. Nano going to be on the front line. Double kill coming up from Grub, instantly making this a six versus four. Zook with a follow-up onto that Orisa. Double kill, and that is going to be a solid reset here for Marist and has no ability to even somewhat get away. Quinnipiac was able to utilize the Deadeye exactly how I said, right? Get those shields down. They they really focused down face misc for Marist College, which is playing the Reinhardt, and that allowed that... Deadeye to really pop off. Now, though, pay attention to Matt Musky. They have their rip tire ready to go, and Marist College is going to have to be prepared to, to rip down that tire. Musky holding on patiently on the high ground, waiting to see if there's an opportunity to get the ultimate coming out the window. You do have Goo going down, but a flank just behind does get the double, almost being deleted, but a quick explosion just before its health value reaches zero. Matt getting the triple now and continuing to press forward. This is going to be a very difficult changeover with Marist in these last few seconds. This is last fight territory, Rich. And there's a lot of tools that Quinnipiac has in order to just kind of move through Marist College for this last fight. They have the supercharger. There's no answer to it. Ohm doesn't have the sound barrier yet, and even the sound barrier might not be enough to get through all of this damage that's coming out from the supercharger. Face Mist trying to find an Earth Shatter. The Blizzard is committed. You've got the supercharger, like you said, but will be deleted and now moved off the edge. That is a kill double for Face on the front. This is an opportunity now for Marist to really turn this around with these last few overtime seconds. The Nano Boost most likely going to be held onto here, not going to use it as a reset now comes out from Quinnipiac because they have an opportunity with a long amount of time to turn this back. Uh, Quinnipiac just got a little bit confused there. They, you saw the team got split up as soon as Face Mix decided to charge in, but that was the opening that Marist College needed. That chaos that was created from the Blizzard really split up Quinnipiac, and it allowed the rest of the tools that Marist College used, like the Sound Barrier, to really get full value. But high ground advantage just got deleted. That halt was beautiful, but because Goo was in the back looking for a hook opportunity to maybe get a whole hog off the edge, it falls short, but Matt on the front getting some great usage. The rip tire again, trying to find value into the halt, but the rotation of the shield here by face was brilliantly on point to block it, and in return, the Earth Shatter gets denied. Harmonix in the back with this May trying to get some damage out onto the shield, but the sound barrier from Broccoli from Quinnipiac able to keep this team alive, and you have Matt cleaning up the overtime, shredding away it's only the diva remaining ties hoping to buy enough seconds here with the nano boost to hopefully allow the team of maris to get back onto this point to compete but this is an extremely tall order the overtime shreds away the tracer tries to touch the point and this is just going to be a lengthy stagger no one able to get there the whole hog to secure it and it's just time going to be wasted hopefully to switch it back Hopefully to switch it back, but every single time a new member steps onto the point, that's just another couple of seconds that that overtime wick expires faster. Quinnipiac looks solid on this very first round of Oasis. It's up to Marist College now to really take over control of the point first if they want to have a chance against this Roadhog-Arissa combination. 
Well, and from what we saw last time with Quinnipiac on this university map specifically, they chose to go more with a Reinhardt and a, uh, the Zarya play, trying to see if that could be more advantageous for them. But they're still going to stick to this. And again, with that pit being in the center, even though it's not an environmental kill, there is a lot of opportunity to gain numbers advantage on that high ground and exploit the remaining members. Oh, it's your favorite thing, Rich. Really Every is. single time <laughs> we come to this point, you see an Orisa and you get so excited about the potential of using those pulls in order to remove members of the opposing team from this fight. But Maris College gets to the point first. Quinnipiac takes control of the high ground, but watch out for who on this flank. And Volkul almost being picked off. Nice job with the support by the healers to keep that Moira alive, fading underneath. Now the rotation comes through. Zook gonna get some displacement along with that concussion coming out from Matt in the back, taking down ties. This number's disadvantage makes it about an even pace. Now five to five on the point as Face Miss manages to get the kill onto that DPS and a follow-up onto both supports. Numbers advantage easily in favor of Marist. And now you have Quinnipiac having to play careful and at this point allow the point to be given over. I love the change that Marist College made to their team composition. They actually have Taze switch from the D.Va to the main tank role in the Reinhardt, allowing Face Misk to play the Zarya. And what does Zarya do best? It does best in the face of a Junkrat. You've got bubbles to soak up all that damage and get highlighter charge. Face Misk is almost full. This is going to be very quick to build up to that Graviton Surge. You have the compete in the back by Matt. The Riptire going to get instantly deleted. A little bit of an overzealous play in the back line with Zook forcing out the Fortify from Quinnipiac on the Sarisa. Broccoli on the side trying to look for some displacement, but the Coalescence is going to be so dominant from Marist to overwhelm the front line of Quinnipiac that you have to see them play carefully as Savage just tries to keep the remaining teammates alive with the Coalescence of their own. Coalescence, though, not really doing too much in this situation when Maris College is able to utilize these walls to just get out of the way. Sure, that Coalescence goes through barriers, but it doesn't get a chance to go through the actual architecture of the map. And all the while, Face Misk just utilizing that charge and deleting members of Quinnipiac. I mean, we're talking almost 100 energy stacked up because of that Junkrat tactic you said. Now with Harmonics on the front with the Blizzard trying to lock down a few members of Quinnipiac. Nobody in the center of it, but zoning out multiple members from Quinnipiac. You've got Goo trying to rotate back to give some assistance. Gets the picks on the Lucio, but the boop in return can't find any value. And now it's 75%, a reverse opportunity. Maris in last fight territory to shut down Quinnipiac. Marist utilized that blizzard just to ensure the last couple of kills, but also to ensure that their final plan can work, which is that Graviton. Nice separation with the Maywell Supercharger for the damage boost, but the Graviton comes out. Broccoli responding with a sound barrier, but does get prevented in the back side of it. Beautiful job by Emerald, laying down so much damage as Goo attempts to turn this back single-handedly. Wow. With three members going down, almost gets the quad, but the overtime wicks away, and that is going to be a one-to-one -one map score so far on Oasis. The compositional change that Maris College made really made the difference because mm -hmm. it was very difficult for Quinnipiac to have these tanks that are supposed to be more of a defensively favored composition actually take control of the point. That Reaper, Emerald, being able to play so aggressively with the team, it just was a beautiful play. Um, you also saved the Death Blossom for kind of that right moment with that combination of the Graviton Surge, and it was too much damage for even Broccoli's Sound Barrier to save them from. As these doors open, we see both teams bringing everything they've got. Again, this is the semifinals and moving into the grand finals as we have a decent composition. Again, a slight changeup, though. Ryan and a, ooh, actually the Roadhog combination from Quinnipiac. Good call. Good call, especially when you have a Reinhardt versus Reinhardt battle. And the shield going to be able to prevent a lot of damage from ties here. Marist, you've got Grub, though, finding a decent pick on the support as Goo falls as well. Five to five, Matt trying to keep the damage high, but unfortunately, Face finds the damage just enough here, withstanding all those incoming grenades as Zook, surprisingly in the thick of things, sticks alive near the supports, giving a lot of value to that hammer on the front line. And this will now go in favor of Quinnipiac and forcing Marist to reform. 
Zook is the main shot caller of the team, and you could really see that the calls that they were making were being followed up upon. It looked as though whatever Zook was swinging at, everyone else on the side of Quinnipiac University was also looking at the same target, which made it a lot easier for them to take control of this first point. Now they have a lot of tools to work with. Zook is outpacing Tace right now for this Earth Shatter. Ooh, the drop down from Goo just behind the shield as a Nano comes on top. Lots of damage on the front side, but a nice May wall here from Harmonix to shut that down with a Coalescence committed. Grub once again with the Deadeye, finding two consistently every attempt on this ultimate and a follow-up for a third. Another reset here as Grub constantly gets a lot of window of opportunity. Window of opportunity because they're just uncontested on high ground. And this is also in conjunction with the Junkrat that is also sitting on high ground. There's not really a good way for Maris College to approach this point without being in the fray for either the right, the, the Junkrat or the McCree charge. So take a look yeah, yeah. at this rotation that Maris College is utilizing here to try to force Grub off of this high ground. Taking the Jettison, needing to take this high ground position to force down Quinnipiac. Nice job, but the rotation around this center room is going to be critical. Lots of opportunity with that Blizzard to lock down multiple members, but you see Quinnipiac efficiently just outmaneuvering and outpacing Marist on that rotation. The Dead Blossom comes out, but an immediate flashbang to cease that damage. Whole Hog on the Zarya. No ability to withstand the damage as those barriers come out from the Zarya play. Face Mist trying to do everything possible to keep this fight alive for the team as the Lucio, being the sole remaining support member on this point, looking for a regroup, manages to come through on this and ceasing that percentage gain at 95 for Quinnipiac. I'm so impressed with Maris College. They lost both supports at the beginning of that fight and were still able to take it back. An expensive take back for them, but now they have control of this high ground where Grub was giving them a lot of trouble. So this is kind of the perfect position for Maris College to be. This allows them to kind of get the drop on the enemy team and they have the Graviton to do just that. Matt gonna look for a flank, has a lot of damage coming from behind the shield as the grab comes through, switching it back. Earth Shatter on the front by Zook, doesn't get much value since it was blocked into the overtime now. Matt still continuing to rain damage just onto the shield, but does get taken down by Face Misk with that consistent coverage and that focus on that consistent DPS. 99 into the overtime, you've got the numbers just continuing to be reduced. Beautiful job by Maris to keep this fight alive despite the Bionades coming out from Haiti Savage on the other side and that will be another switch over with some decent ultimate economy to carry into the next fight that ultimate economy is huge for Maris College. They were able to get a significant amount of alt charge from the fact that Quinnipiac University stayed on the point and stayed in overtime for as long as they did. And not only did that also buy valuable time for Maris College to kind of get their wits about them and figure out a game plan going into this next fight, but Quinnipiac now is kind of looking at two fights here. And they don't really have much to be able to take over this first point if th this is going to have to be a kind of a huge electric cowboy. Earth Shatter coming out, only getting one blocked by mostly of the shield, but a Bionade lands onto three. Quinnipiac having to play carefully as the Death Blossom comes in from behind, absolutely flanking the rear of Quinnipiac from Marist, going to secure another hold on this. And now that second fight you talked about is in the very near future and is going to be the last resort. Last resort, last fight, absolutely. And there was a good stagger onto Matt Muskie from Marist that will make sure that we are in last fight territory where all bets are off now. It is one to one. You have to make something happen here if you are Quinnipiac in order to take back control of this point. And Maris College has a lot of tools. They, they have a blizzard and Quinnipiac doesn't have an answer right now. Moving quickly to the point, Zook gonna keep that shield high. The drop comes out, Blizzard being the win condition as the Rip Tire tries to find some value in the back. Beautiful sound barrier committed though, coming out from Maris to keep the team alive as that Rip Tire hesitates as long as possible as the shield does go down. Goo rotating in the center, trying to get that crossfire with that DPS on the opposing side with that McCree. Grub pressing forward, having the whole hog from another side flank, absolutely swarming the back line here onto Marist. Quinnipiac finally coming through in the end of this and managing to take this third map onto Oasis and claiming the first of this best of five. That was so close 
for the last fight that it really came down to actually how Matt on the junk rat for Quinnipiac was maneuvering themselves around the point. Not only did they get a key member with the rip tire at the very end, but they also were able to just kind of make themselves a nuisance in the back line. You never really knew where the Junkrat was going because the Concussive Blast were sending them all over the map. Um, it, this is going to be a fantastic match between these two teams. They're very evenly matched in skill, and I can't wait to see the difference in play styles that we get a chance to see moving into the next map type. Very much agree with you. And again, the specific thing to focus on too with Quinnipiac is we talked about how that they can work so well as a unit, but the fact that they can coordinate themselves over such a wide span of area with the road hog from Goo rotating around the backside, Junkrat maintaining the high ground, the attention to detail and their positioning to try and surround their opponent onto Marist was absolutely beautifully done in that last fight and utilizing the ultimates in critical moments to make sure that it was a securance on this map of Oasis. What I end up wanting to see from Maris in order to take maybe the next map and, and bring this up to a 1-1 scoreline is just it could keep setting the pace of the fights. When they're using ultimates first, they tend to end up winning those fights so marist just needs to ensure that they have a window of opportunity but they're also creating it for themselves oh very much and before we get into this next map which is going to be an escort we'll allow these two teams to see exactly which one is going to be selected but we're going to be right back with a commercial break and you'll be bravo team moving to checkpoint Sometimes the front lines are in our own backyard. Make a difference in your community, serving part-time in the Army National Guard. Bud Light made a seltzer? Wait, Bud Light made a seltzer? I wonder what it tastes like. Only one way to find out. What are the taste buds saying? It tastes great. Just hard seltzer with a hint of fruit flavor. Let's get that instead. Wait, 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 wait. Post Malone doesn't drink seltzer. We drink Bud Light. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Why not try something new? Bud Light. Seltzer. Guys, let's get both. I'll get both. Bud Light seltzer. Unquestionably good. Quinnipiac, we see more than a campus. We see a community built to ignite passions. We see more than a degree. We see the careers of tomorrow. We see more than a student. We see someone destined to make an impact. Hello and welcome back, everybody, as we've already seen a spectacular match on Oasis as we transition into an escort map, and it's going to be Havana. And this is one of those maps that I feel we don't get to see as much because there's a lot of, you know, favoritism towards, you know, a Junker Town or a Route 66, and, and those are typically a very big focus um, mm -hmm. into that, you know, rotation, but even Dorado, more or less. So it's nice to see Havana coming out here for this for this match. I, I think it's because Havana just has a very difficult second point to hold. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it makes a lot of teams really uncomfortable, but Quinnipiac seems to be very confident. In fact, moving into the next map of Havana, they've decided to defend first. Yeah. Uh, so I can't wait to see what plan they have up their sleeve because we, we've seen them do some, some really good defensive holds. They full held Temple of Anubis on a, um, our, our last bout with Quinnipiac um, and I, I kind of wonder whether or not they're going to have some sort of hyper-aggressive strategy for this as well. I would expect them to. 
I mean, and a lot of it came down to that Junkrat play that was on the, you know, Temple of Anubis. There mm -hmm. was so much explosive damage coming out on that map itself that really nobody could handle Matt Muskie on that character. But it looks like already on the defensive side here, you're going to actually see a Torbjorn pickup mm -hmm. with Grub on this Ash. I'm really excited about that. Grub showed off a really lethal Widowmaker mm -hmm. um, and the last time that we got a chance to see them. And now they are going to be playing a, another Hitscan hero that really requires prowess. Uh, I'm really excited about this defensive composition. Not super excited about where they've decided to, to hold, but this might just be part of the plan. I mean, it might be, and we saw a little bit of the Ash play as well coming out from Grub on the Oasis City Center prior, so we've at least had some vision of this type of composition slightly, but the Torbjorn is still going to be interesting, and as this payload pushes up here from Marist, looking to see if there's an opportunity of getting a pick around the corner with the Hanzo on this, you know, Emerald, and Harmonic's feeling confident with this May as the fight really is just going to be delayed for a moment, but a beautiful hook on the high ground, taking the Zarya out of the fight, but Ty's still taking the early lead in the numbers. Yeah, you gotta be really careful against Harmonics is May. It, it's just, the May walls are going to do a lot to disrupt the ability to play together as a team. Uh, and the Reinhardt might be kind of on their own in this situation. And the fact that you have a lot of this really patient play around the payload itself is giving a lot more of an advantage, but that hook again, trying to sever the team, bringing multiple members of Marist outside of their comfort zone as the Torbjorn looks for a flank with the turret. Pin gonna come through by Ties, managing to take down Zook on the tanking counterpart with three minutes to work with, as this is a nice cleanup and strategic play by Marist to reach this checkpoint. Did you hear that voice line from May after she got the nano? It was just, nothing can stop me, and my goodness, you're right. As soon as Harmonix got that nano boost coming out from Vocal, it was like every tank on Quinnipiac got instantly deleted. And look at how much space the tanks on Maris College are creating for the DPS and also for this cart to move. It's, it's almost like a very different type of playstyle coming out from Quinnipiac. They can't gain any sort of ground on this catwalk area or the balcony for them to really try and contest against this. Goo gonna look for a backline rotation all alone separated from the team, but now the pin comes cross underneath, separating the Reinhardt from Quinnipiac. Goes down Zook out of the fight once again here and that is really, I think, causing a lot of problems for Quinnipiac. It, it must be, because as I mentioned before, Zook is the main shot caller of the team, and if the main shot caller is not there, it's not really easy to formulate a game plan. Marist must have some sort of idea that bullying down that main tank is kind of a key to their success here. Look at, as soon as Zook exits spawn, that's the target that they choose. Bob is going to be dropped to try and hopefully stabilize on the front line here. Broccoli playing the Zenyatta, trying to place that Discord Orb on the back as a regroup comes through. Again, because of those staggers on both of these tanks, Zook and Goo have to force a regroup now that everyone is back online. And Marist is going to respect this. Marist is respecting it. That's giving a lot of time to Quinnipiac to get their wits about them and figure out the game plan moving forward. Zook has an Earth Shatter. As long as he can get Taze barrier to go down, then that Earth Shatter is going to be really big. Ooh, blocking it on the low ground. Nice swivel of the shield. No Earth Shatter available. Transcend. It's beautifully timed to withstand the Dragon Strike as a Blizzard is also committed from Marist. Dropping down from the high ground. Goo in the back with the whole hug, hoping to try and, again, dislodge this positioning from Marist, but can't manage to do so as an Earth Shatter comes through for three. Is there the damage to follow it up as the Nano is committed as well on the front line of ties? Face Mist trying to give some space and coverage as well, and that is another cleanup here by Marist looking to reach this checkpoint. That was an expensive fight for both teams, but as they like to say, those who alt last end up usually winning the fight. Um, and that's kind of what happened there for Marist College, where they just had extra tools when Quinnipiac had kind of run out of a just ultimates to use in that fight. So Marist College was able to hit the Earth Shatter, able to hit the, the powerful Nano on top of it to really give Taze the ability to hit some grand slams out of the park and now this card's going to be moving into the third point this is where quinnipiac is is really going to struggle um but i love that goo decided to go over to the zarya i think the zarya is going to help out a lot in terms of making sure that that characters on their team can't get frozen by this may 
And now in the choke point, Bob gonna knock up the front line, getting a decent amount of damage, but beautiful sleep to respond to this from the Ana play, making sure that there is not an opportunity for that extra damage by the payload. But again, you do still see Face Mist along with Ties playing carefully around that payload until Bob has depleted. Broccoli with a nice res, keeping Grub up on this now bridgeway. You do have the sound barrier coming from Oum by Maris to try and rotate back and take this advantage on Tamat, who is extremely separated from the team with a tactical visor and a nano boost actually allowing a lot of value, drawing attention away with that backline mat play allowed Grub to really accelerate on the front line. Not only that, but Grub's also getting a nice power-up boost coming in from Broccoli, who has also switched over characters to the, the Mercy. Um, not only is Mercy providing a lot of value from being able to damage boost and, and really reset the ultimate economy after having to reset the composition, um, but we also saw a beautiful Resurrect come through, which is going to help with this one-pick potential that Marist College has. Now with the grab coming out in the corner, having the Dragon Strike through the front, getting a lot of value you emerald wow. with the quad huge combination coming out from marist push halo tore its final meters and you do have harmonics now getting the final team kill the bell has rung will quinnipiac get to this point in time the few seconds remain and at least some contest is available as the blizzard wants to lock down any member here for on this defensive side not allowing anyone to stick through it bob being the last sole remaining member trying to prevent those 2.1 meters left and you now have marist completing with a two minute and 12 second time bank Depending on how Quinnipiac approaches this next attack, I have a sneaking suspicion we might be going into extra innings on this one. I wouldn't doubt it, to be honest, with how well you have Marist starting to come out on this map. Again, they had map selection. This is an opportunity for them to demonstrate their comfort pick on this map and now transitioning to the defensive side i'm curious to see what their type of composition is going to be to respond to how quinnipiac is going to enter in on this attack i would not be surprised if we saw maybe the same reinhardt zarya that was transitioned to at the end on the defensive side from quinnipiac but we'll just have to take a look but in the meantime let's take a look at this defensive side from marist Marist is running uh, their signature composition for the most part, and that signature composition is very death ball oriented. The only change that I've seen them make between their attack versus their defense is actually going to have Ulm on the Baptiste. Now, what the Baptiste does in this kind of defensive style is, especially knowing what Quinnipiac might come out with, you have an immortality field. That is going to do wonders, especially versus Matt Muskie's Drunk Rat, which has been chunking away at damage into Maris College's team. So you can either utilize that immortality field to save a member of a team from just junk frag grenades or save it from a rip tire. Now as the doors open, a very far forward by Marist wanting to lock Quinnipiac on this doorway and spawn area. Matt on the Junkrat rotating around again, playing hyper aggressive, trying to just unload massive amounts of frontline damage in this explosion radius as Ties takes down that aggression, not allowing Matt to stick on the front line. Face Mist getting very low, but there's no one to follow up with that immortality field here. This skin is going to be a very well held front line. This is kind of what I expected to see coming out from Quinnipiac's defense. This early hold is going to allow Maris College to not only build up ultimates, but it also buys them an extra chance to defend this first point. Look at how aggressive they get a chance to be. I mean, it is just flawless with how they're playing. Matt hoping to try and break this just consistent defensive line with Grub rotating out as well with the Zenyatta on the Discord orb usage. But the numbers start to reduce here for Marist, and that's the opportunity for Quinnipiac to get onto this point and start to push it. But they've already lost a minute worth of time. That's exactly what this early defensive hold allows, is it just buys time off the clock, and the amplification matrix also might be enough to turn this 4v6 into a 4v4. The immortality field really pulling out a lot of opportunity for this defensive hold. You also have now that wall severing multiple members from Quinnipiac. A face miss, double kill, triple kill, looking for almost the quad as Zook with a nano boost all alone remaining here. Can't seem to do anything. 
And I am really and thoroughly impressed by Marist. And at this point, Quinnipiac has no idea how to change this up. I'm impressed with them too, but also watch out for Emerald. Look at them on top of the gas pumps. They are getting ready with the Death Blossom and they want to make it as big of a surprise as possible. Quinnipiac has a lot of tools to be able to try to get out these gates, but they don't really have anything to save them from a Death Blossom just yet. Ooh, the grab comes through on both sides. Everyone pulled together. Dragon Strike, Transcendence, and the Death Blossom going to be committed. Beautiful sleep by that Ana play in the back onto Emerald. Not getting much value with the damages of At. Tries to get something with this Rip Tire around the back line, hoping to get Moira. Does get two, actually, both Harmonics and Vocal, to now try and maybe regroup on this payload and only has a minute and 30 to try and push this the whole way. Minute and 30 is not a lot of time compared to what Marist College was able to save up in the bank for their first attack push. Quinnipiac had to expend a lot of resources in that last fight in order to just even get out the gate. But Marist College, they've bought themselves valuable time and they've bought themselves another chance at defending this point. That's exactly what that close hold is for. And they have a blizzard. Broccoli had to use the transcendence already. So how is Quinnipiac going to answer this? Coalescence and the Amplification Matrix going to be forced out by Martist to try and see if they can get a chance. They are holding on to Harmonix's Blizzard, though. Great usage and maintaining that. Bionate in return going to be coming out from Quinnipiac, but can't seem to get too much value here with the Blizzard from Marist, and that's going to be a cleanup here on the attacking side. Despite the Blizzard coming out, it could not stop that rotation around that freezing area. Okay, there we go. This is the team that I remember seeing on Monday and also what we just saw from that control point. Quinnipiac is on a roll now. They understand kind of what they need to do in these next fights. And a lot of this comes down to how Broccoli is playing the Zenyatta. You mentioned the Discord orbs and they're finding their mark onto the members of Marist College, especially those problems, uh, those problem characters for them like Harmonix on the May. Now you have a nice sleep in the back. Grab going to pull multiple members on that wall, but Emerald still getting some great value on this McCree as Matt and Broccoli really try to work in tandem with one another. But this rotation around Marist is going to be difficult. They have to play carefully against Quinnipiac. And really, just this rotation underneath this bridgeway and Catwalk is for both teams very uneasy at this moment. The, the cart's moving forward and there's a fight happening in the back, but this is going to just stagger Marist College right now when they don't have the members of the team available in order to take these fights. Quinnipiac still has a team of six and they are be able, they're really making up for lost time here. Yeah, the fact that they've got two minutes going into this next checkpoint is going to be critical to try and take this home stretch and complete the map with at least a decent time bank, if any at all. As Maris now pushes in, Coalescence is the dead eye from Grub, comes out, great shield by the Zarya, gets the double as well, with Broccoli following up with a nice volley. And that is a huge fight going in favor of Quinnipiac. And honestly, the fact that Quinnipiac is managing to get a solid hold on this payload now Maris is having a difficult time competing. Yeah, this is kind of the momentum generated from the cart is really helping Quinnipiac to move through these checkpoints with ease. And now they've really gotten through to the ultimate economy that they want to have, the ultimate rotations that they want to have. Zook is going to have another Earth Shatter. Matt Muskie is coming up on yet another Rip Tire. Uh, and Broccoli has a Transcendence, which is going to help a lot for these combinations that Maris College wants us to use. Blizzard again towards the payload. Transcendence to respond. Not going to be enough damage to try and get the picks off in the back but Zook looking for an earth shatter trying to get multiple members with a fire strike as well the dead eye claims two from emerald but a nice rip tire rotating around the back with the triple kill from grub allows an entire team kill and these last few meters now are really gonna have to be strong from marist on the defense strategy that Quinnipiac has kind of developed just in order to get the last couple of members back to this cart. They haven't decided to push this with three. Uh, they decided to push it with one, and that's going to just slow things down a little bit here. But uh, they might have to take a lost fight here or just take out members before this Graviton and the Sound Bear are able to hit from Marist. 
Grab in the corner, pulling two of the tanks together, but the Nano comes out despite the Earth Shatter landing onto two, has to remove the Ice Wall since it was more of a separation tactic, but blocked a little bit of Marist's assault against those two that were stunned. Quinnipiac surviving in the back, Deadeye gonna come out again by Grub, has to break the barrier wall, gonna deflect the shots. Beautiful response here coming out by Harmonix before taken down. Emerald, along with the both tanks from Marist, having to do everything they can as this payload is reaching that golden box of completion right now with a minute still to work with a minute's gonna be a long time i i, I don't know I, I think i must be a fortune teller or something i already told you we were going to extra rounds as the moira tries to get back in the extra rounds are nearing the reaper tries to get onto the payload emerald doing everything possible to hopefully buy a few seconds for that wrecking ball to touch manages to do so the charge as well as these numbers start to increase on the respawn advantage this could start spelling disaster for quinnipiac the Reaper coming as well. Damage still being significantly high from both Grub and Matt, along with high... D oh my goodness, that's gonna be it. No one sticking close as the Transcendence from Broccoli comes out as an insurance policy. 60 seconds on the time bank, and now we go to another round. In a stall situation, it's really, really hard to play against a Zenyatta that has a Discord orb that's gonna help to just dish out extra damage against the team, and Moira that can kind of just... Lock on to enemies, especially those speedy heroes like Tracer, like Wrecking Ball. So uh, I think that that was just kind of waiting to happen. But uh, kudos to Marist College for being able to buy as much time off the clock as they did. Because there is a minute and a half difference in the time bank. That could make a break a difference between... Uh, ha Marist College basically has two extra team fights. Whereas Quinnipiac really only gets one shot at this payload. And with just that minute... It's a very, very limited amount of time. And when you're on the attack after being so heavily held, and it's going to be the same selection in composition. And honestly, I feel that that's really what the Baptiste brings to this on this very front line. It's just yes. really stalling out that time. It just allows so much opportunity. If anybody is so just micro close to being picked off, you have that response, but surprisingly, you're gonna see Marist play a little bit of a different position, not near the gas station, but in this side building where that hotel room is. A little bit of a sneaky tactic, but they're showing their face now. They just kind of want to try to take out uh, Quinnipiac as easily as possible, but look at this, a, a last second swap here. Broccoli goes back over to the Lucio. We've got Goo on the Orisa this time and Zook on the Sigma. Interesting change up. Matt getting a, a follow up with Grub. Three already eliminated. That immortality feel not going to prevail this time around. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me once, or correction, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. That's exactly how it should have been said. And you see this 30 <laughs> seconds going to be more than enough to push this payload at least a decent amount of distance. Hey, I, I think that's what Muskie's saying at least because this Junkrat has been able to do so much work. Uh, the defense wasn't particularly stellar coming out from Quinnipiac when Muskie was on the Torbjorn, but on this Junkrat, Oh my goodness, and you even see Maris having to switch up a little bit here for this last second attempt at this cart defense. Matt diving in the back line with that significant amount of damage and will unfortunately be picked off. Grub trying to help on the front. This shield holding well with the Orisa by ties to try and compete, picking off one member after another. Quinnipiac is having a difficult time keeping their composure, unable to do anything with that compositional switch right at the tail end of it. Sigma and Orisa coming through from Marist, but that is still a decent push here in this first round, which otherwise might not have moved at all. No, very, very decent push from Quinnipiac. It looked incredibly different than the very first time that they ended up getting a chance to attack. Didn't quite reach the checkpoint, but got very, very close. And I appreciate the change in composition that they made, especially after seeing Marist College come out of their defensive hiding place. Uh, the, the Orisa and the Sigma worked so well together, um, but... Uh, this is where it gets really tough. Marist College is two and a half minutes on the clock, and Quinnipiac can't really make any mistakes here. They have to take a close hold in order to afford themselves a, a, a couple of team fights. Uh, if they take the close hold here and they and they wipe quickly, then they might be able to get one more really good contestant and then another last second contest. But they also have to make no mistakes in the composition that they run. This is what they're locked into for this defensive hold. It's going to be the Arisa and the Sigma again. 
And you really wouldn't even want to risk trying to rotate off because let's say hypothetically, if you are starting to yes. generate at least a decent ultimate charge and you throw that away, that's also another risk. So you have exactly. to be very cognizant of going into this and you are absolutely right. But bringing out the Sigma and Orisa that works very much on the attack could do just as well on this defense. I think so. I really like the close hold that Quinnipiac is taking. Um, they gotta be careful though. Matt specifically has to make sure they don't get caught out like that. Ooh, a nice exchange though. There was at least a decent amount of damage onto face misc with that Junkrat before being taken down, but the immortality field allowing a chance to survive through it. Both of these halts being absolutely critical to pull the entire team just above those barriers from the Orisa play. And now the respawn advantage still favoring Marist on this attack. The wall trying to block a few off as Broccoli manages to rotate around it effectively to get that movement and healing necessary. And what a lightning fast amplification matrix here to boost the damage to try and force back Quinnipiac. Ooh, but the Gravit Gravitic Flux to answer. Immortality Field placed down just in time in order to save a couple members, but this kill feed's still lighting up with blue, Rich. And the fact that Zook is this far forward causing a lot of distraction, allowing the DPS in the back line to flourish is really critical here. And that Kinetic Grasp is consistently allowing survivability on the front. Grub's taking great flanks. Not only are Goo and Zook for Quinnipiac able to create the space like you mentioned, but Grub's really taking advantage of it along with Matt. If Matt's able to stay a little bit farther back here and allow these junk wrap grenades to spam and chunk down the shields on Maris College, then the double shield isn't really a factor anymore for the team. Just over 60 seconds to work with. The payload starts to push, and this corner and back high ground balcony from Matt is going to be critical to play. But Matt, not wanting to go too far forward here, has to play careful inside of that side room as the halt brings multiples out. The dead eye from that center section down the street. Immortality field, a nice knock up, finding one onto the support, which is critical. And this is a difficult spot to be in as the onslaught of damage comes out from Quinnipiac onto Marist. And this is now last fight territory as Marist has to get a full six for this next. This is looking like a very different storyline than what the time banks were suggesting before. But pay attention to the fact that Maris College hasn't really been able to utilize their ultimates yet. And remember where we say they flourish when they get a chance to set the pace of these fights with their alts. It's going to be very, very important for both of these teams to ult last and make sure they get value from their ultimates. Flux on two members of Quinnipiac, but the sound barrier is there to respond. Riptire claiming one early, and the flank comes through again by the aggressive Junkrat and Coalescence to secure. The Death Blossom can only do so much here as the double for Emerald tries to keep this alive, but that is going to be Quinnipiac managing to prevent this overtime from continuing any further. The Symmetra Teleporter not going to be fast enough as a trap locks down the Lucio movement as Quinnipiac claims this next map of Havana. Quinnipiac's on match point versus Marist College, the number one seed in the MAC 2020 Esports Championships. And I mean, you called it from that interview that we had from Zook, the confidence, the inspiration, just the sheer devotion to trying to bring this to a grand finals with no hesitation in any words of confidence. And they are definitely demonstrating it against this number one seed team that is Marist. The scoreline does not show how close these fights really are, though. It really, really doesn't. Marist College is putting up one heck of a fight here, and it's no easy win for Quinnipiac. It's no easy win. No, no, it's not. I mean, we're talking about a serious rally that has to come through for Marist to get this reverse sweep, to bring themselves into this grand finals and find out who they're going to compete against. But before we get into that next map, we're going to go to a brief break, and that will give enough time for these teams to decide what that next
Sometimes the front lines are in our own backyard. Make a difference in your community, serving part-time in the Army National Guard. It begins with our mission and values. A culture of innovation and collaboration. Achieving a global perspective beyond the classroom. Turning education and theory into practice. Developing lifelong interests and connections and striving to make a difference in our communities. Marist College. When you come to Niagara University, you don't just evolve academically. My transformation here has been huge. I'm serving others now, and it's really helped me see my purpose. Niagara University really helped bring out that side of me. Bud Light made a seltzer? Wait, Bud Light made a seltzer? I wonder what it tastes like. Only one way to find out. What are the taste buds saying? Tastes great. Just hard seltzer with a hint of fruit flavor. Let's get that instead. Wait, 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 wait. Post Malone doesn't drink seltzer. We drink Bud Light. Everybody knows that. Why not try something new? Bud Light Seltzer. Guys, let's get both. I'll get both. Bud Light Seltzer. Unquestionably good. Manhattan College has been shaping the greatest city in the world since 1853. But what you'll find here might surprise you. It's a small campus in a big city. It's where strong values meet open minds, knowledge becomes innovation, and changed lives become unbreakable bonds. Because when you welcome different perspectives, you rise above the expected and the world follows. That's the Manhattan I don't experience. Know how this is gonna go. Yes. Oh, yeah. Hello and welcome back, everybody, as we are entering into our third map in this best of five. And for those of you that might have not been here when we announced that it is going to be an assault and the selection is Hanamura. And this we've already actually been able to see quite a bit of gameplay prior on Monday. We did. We we, we saw Hanamura a, a few times, I believe, on we saw it at least once on Monday. Um, the other pick that happened before for especially Quinnipiac was Anubis. Uh, but I, I expect that they're going to do really well on, on Hanamura as, as well. Uh, something that I, I noticed and we were talking a little bit about during the break is that Marist, ag again, is is putting up a heck of a fight. It's no easy task for Quinnipiac to take these wins. And the scoreline of 2-0, the fact that we're on match point right now is not indicative of how close these matches really are. When you're looking at an assault map and you're especially looking at the fact that Marist College was such a good defensive team, this might also be a very, very tough match for Quinnipiac. It really might. And I mean, assault just as a beast in and of itself, I really know exactly how, how this match goes every time. Um <laughs> Yeah. So Dronimura? it's it's yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Hanamura Temple of Anubis is another one that we see a lot. But I mean, between the two and what the listing was here, you know, we already saw Marist pick a map that they felt very confident on. I think even though that Marist was not able to take Havana, they still played it extremely strategically and just fell short with over overestimating that strategy occurring twice in a row with such success. So now going into this, I think they can maybe do the same thing where I think they're going to play to their strengths, but acknowledge that if something a second time around prevents presents itself, they cannot just stick in their mold. It's really tough because there were a couple of fights where they ended up being kind of ultimate fiestas. You had alts getting thrown out left and right. And remember, we kind of talked about it again. Those who alt last win the fight. 
Mm -hmm. um and and especially in that very very last team fight on um on havana there there just wasn't really a good game plan from either Mm -hmm. team it was just kind of a call and a response and quinnipiac was doing the calling Mm -hmm. whereas we really wanted to see marist doing that calling that's really where they shine yeah there was a lot of dominance shift you had marist so strategically demonstrating the authority onto quinnipiac but the fact that quinnipiac was able to adjust acclimate recognize the weaknesses and the strengths that marist had on top of them that they were able to adapt and that's one of the key things here is the adaptation to really compete against a team as you go through these maps especially leading you into the grand finals that is probably one of the most important things just having the adaptation for your entire composition and of your players to really bring you and which is why these teams are in this semifinals. Yeah, that's just kind of that's just kind of how it goes, right? Um, these are teams that have earned their place in the semifinals. Maris College is the number one seed. Quinnipiac is number four. There's not too much difference between the two of them. Um, and we actually have a bit of a change up coming in from Maris College. Emerald is going to be taking a, a sit out on this one for default. And default here, having that adjustment with the composition, again, probably leads to knowing the strengths of this map and how they play as a whole. Mm -hmm. It can either go in one of two ways. We talk about it a lot. You know, when you're bringing in an alternative player, it can sometimes throw a wrench for what Quinnipiac has been used to for these previous maps how they're going to respond to it what exactly type of wheelhouse default has in their character pool to bring out onto this map and once again marist is going to be on the attack this time around so you get to see quinnipiac actually get to see exactly how default plays on an aggressive type nature it is going to be very interesting to see how default ends up playing this specific map um I, I, I don't know uh, how it's going to go, but they, I really like the strategy that we might be seeing from Maris College. We we got a chance to see this a little bit from Sienna College. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see whether or not Quinnipiac is ready for it. And I like that Grubs back on this Ash, having a lot of the you know hit scan. We saw the Widowmaker in the week now you're going to have that mobility coming out with a viper shot and having this baptiste with the immortality field so a lot of survival tactics synergize with that one pick potential with the halt hook combination lots of synergy between that and there's lots of synergy on maris college as well look at the teleporter look at this rotation the quick question is 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 quinnipiac going to be able to respond effectively to this rotation matt already starting to pump in a lot of damage on the backside and waiting for another engagement you've got goo as well flanking the dynamic duo between the two trying to get an opportunity but a now retreat in rotation back to their original teleport position matt does get a kill and at this point marist i think is a little lost and confused well, they don't have their Symmetra anymore. That's kind of the whole game plan, is being able to use that teleporter to bypass all of the damage that's incoming from Quinnipiac. But default, the new sub in for the team, does get a quick pick. Another one, too. Trying to continue this applied pressure on the front, aggressing forward, finding much value. The Immortality Field gives at least a few more seconds, but Default getting another triple quad, stacking up on this front line. And Default comes out strong, sitting in the wings, and allows Marist to take this swiftly. Takes it with a significant amount of time in the bank. They they were just waiting for an opportunity to allow default to shine. And now there is a great opportunity for Marist College to actually snowball this. I see a game plan in front of them, which might be utilizing the nano boost for default to build up to the Death Blossom, where there isn't really a good answer to the Death Blossom on Quinnipiac University. We have Hayden Savage, which is playing the Baptiste, which will have the immortality field, but that's only one tool. Gooley didn't taking out default. That is a huge opportunity. The teleporter in the back severing the team. A few members being a little bit late in that teleport. And that is a nice, well cleaned up fight here on the defensive side by Quinnipiac to secure that they have a decent ultimate economy going into this next fight and have stopped Marist's momentum. Stopping Marist's momentum is definitely taking out default is one way to stop the momentum, right? Mm-hmm. Um 
uh, default was such a powerhouse on that first point that Quinnipiac has definitely identified that as something to be concerned about moving into these next couple of fights. Uh, the tanks are going to get shredded by this Reaper. So what better way to remove it, just remove that from the fight? Ooh, another time around. Again, Goo has been very reactive to this Reaper play and keeps a quick eye onto it. Grub generating even more damage in that high ground position. Has the Bob ready. Almost all six ultimates going to be here by Savage soon. A lot of fireworks in this next fight with four minutes to go. Now, two minutes already taken off the clock. That's the power of Goo, I guess, is just making sure that that Reaper is not going to be a factor in these fights. But... Default's working up to the Death Blossom for Marist, and the the wall is here. Bob going to be placed just behind it, so there is some damage, but the sleep comes through as Ties manages to get that Matt Riptire out of the fight. Supercharger boosted as the Death Blossom comes through, but the whole hog from Goo actually keeping a lot of distance from that Death Blossom as the Grab Shatter comes out. So much committed to this. The Death Blossom for Default to shred through the remaining health values, looking for the first tick by Marist. Trying to take down Broccoli, does get taken out. There is still an opportunity with this respawn to get to the point to compete, but it needs to be now to stop this last tick. Ooh, okay, barely is able to touch, but you gotta watch out for the teleporter that's still up and active for Marist College. That's going to allow a lot of members of Marist to come back into this fight, but Quinnipiac is taking them out very easily. Grub in the back doing a well, just significant amount of damage here. Looking for a third. The sleep onto Ties to touch. try and turn this, but nobody touches it. Broccoli just late to get onto the corner of that point. And I am really, really surprised that that actually was able to be completed with their respawn advantage. They were right there. It's 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 just like they, they just didn't know who was going to touch next. But now the game plan for Quinnipiac is to complete this second point with time left in the bank. They have to have time left. I mean, you, the fact that Marist is sitting on three minutes is a significant amount of time to work with when it comes to, you know, this type of assault map where it can just drag on forever. So now with Quinnipiac going on this attack, I would not be surprised to see the Junkrat again. You can already see it hovered, but we'll, I'm interested to see how their tank adjustment is going to be for this. But let's look at Default here. Now, we've already seen the Reaper play on the attacking side and going to opt for this McCree for a defensive play. I like the McCree. I, I like the McCree for a few reasons. Not only does it allow them to have some long range damage on Marist College, but it also, yeah, you have the flashbang. And the flashbang can be a very important kit to stop the momentum generated by Matt Muskie's concussive blast to allow them to just kind of bop around the map. Um, so there's a lot of really, really good uses for this flashbang, um, and I think the McCree is is definitely the right call for Marist College. Yeah, the the synergy between Default and Harmonix with their crowd control is going to be immense, and really needing to utilize it against this attack here from Quinnipia. They've got that teleporter onto that side position, dropping down from the catwalk. As you have Zook leading in, the damage comes out early, taking down a support, but Matt goes as well. Broccoli and Zook working in tandem on the front with that mobility active from the support. But some even exchanges here. Goo forcing out the take a breather, trying to survive and take down Default in the back, but can't manage to do so. And despite the supports are down, there is still an opportunity here for Goo to maintain this position. But there is a lot of damage being pumped into this big man by that McCree and the Zarya. Yeah, but the teleporter is also still active for the attacking team of Quinnipiac. So look at how quickly all of these players are coming back to this point. And the fact that that's still up is really helpful to Quinnipiac. The Ryan Hart play from Zook and support from Broccoli is allowing this sustain and hoping for a solid regroup. Still nobody able to focus that teleporter down, giving that huge gap distance close. But ties on the front, allowing a lot of pressure still and at this point, with both having the Symmetra, they're really in a good spot to get back and keep this fight going. Oh, there's a teleporter active on the other side as well. So Marist College is able to beat the odds and beat the numbers, get their whole team back onto this point and keep firm control of it. There hasn't been significant progress made on this first point for capture progress from Quinnipiac. 
Big shout out to Harmonic switching from that May to the Symmetra to allow that regroup to come out yes. quickly as it's two minutes and 15 seconds. You've got the high noon on the outside. Doesn't seem to get the kill by default, rotating down to that main open area to try and regroup with the team of Marist. Ryan Zarya on the front, mitigating a lot of damage with those shield and barriers as there's a lot of time here still for Grub to work this teleporter through and find a flanking position. Dives through the teleporter, does get one onto the support and the photon barrier trying to sever the team. Matt utilizing that wall with tremendous Tremendous success, not getting picked off on that initial kill, and a Earth Shatter to try and compete. Tons of beam damage on this point. The whole hog going to tuck that Zarya in the corner. Face Misk unable to withstand that explosive damage. And this is finally going to be Quinnipiac claiming this point. Oh, if they remember to <laughs> leave a member on it to, to claim it. That's going to be the big thing here. The Symmetra teleporter has been removed, though. That is a big thing that you had Zook follow up to make sure that it is not going to allow a potential contest. You now have four minutes and 15 seconds to work with to take the second point over Marist. And look at the ultimate bank, Rich. Look at how many resources Quinnipiac has in order to actually take this point. Depending on on what happens in the first couple seconds of the fight, whether or not they get a pick, or if they are able to get the shield down, we're gonna see a significant number of these ultimates come out, and uh, here we go for the snowball Ooh, again. What a rotate onto Goo, and the sound barrier is going to be thrown out early because of the grab. Nice response by Broccoli, as Goo slept on the low ground, not even gonna be in this fight, with a high nude in the back, getting the double by default, finding some huge value down this choke point, and has to rotate to the low ground, trying to collapse onto Goo, who's managed to at least take down Harmonic, and despite the chaos that happened on that catwalk, it is still going in favor of Marist and held on to at least the Ana support ultimate. The, the Deadeye was huge from default. It was absolutely huge. The shield just wasn't in quite the right place uh, at the right time in order to save the entirety of the team. So unfortunately, it took out the, the kind of the two big pieces of the puzzle there, which were the supports from Quinnipiac. Um, it, that kind of just deleted the momentum that had been generated from that first point. Uh, but Quinnipiac still has quite a few resources. They still held on to the rip tire. They're going to have a wall soon, too. Oh, the nano boosted Ryan going in hard on the backside. You've got to fall with an early pick, but the Bionade going to cause that retreat from Savage. Nice job with a return Nano on the front line as well. Hook not going to come through from Goo as a pin just gets halted in the backside. Ty's not going to survive through much if the damage continues from Quinnipiac. But now there's so much of a staggered play and positioning from Quinnipiac that Marist is actually managing to come on top once again. It's kind of the battle of the Bionades. You look at Vocal for Maris College, you also look at Hayden Savage for Quinnipiac, and you, you really hit the nail on the head there, Rich, that you get Bionated and you really should back up because there's no way to really heal the team after that point. You have Marist holding on to that balcony, the Photon Barrier dividing the point in half to make sure that they can bob and weave between it to try and compete against Goo on the front line with Zook, both being committed. But later here by Quinnipiac to buy a few more seconds of coverage, trying to hug onto this corner. Pressing forward, damage gonna start breaking down that shield. A teleporter comes through to try and weave around the backside onto Goo as the High Noon from up top gets another double by default, uncontested. Harmonic with another, and this is a reset and great play with a lengthy fight, mind you, another time around in favor of Marist. I think Quinnipiac, as much as it is difficult, is going to still have to go up to the high ground. Otherwise, you have the same problem that we saw on Oasis from Quinnipiac, which is a McCree on high ground uncontested. And this time, you've got default in that McCree spot, and that's one tough customer. So I, I definitely expect that Quinnipiac's going to continue their, their way up through the top uh, just to try to make sure that Mayor doesn't have this high ground advantage. Grab gonna pull together too, along with a beautiful Bionade onto Grub and to Goo in the backside. Rip tire from the flank, coming out onto potentially one, only gets down Oom on the support play as Broccoli forces out that sound barrier, trying to withstand everything from Marist on this defense. Whole Hog forcing away the last few members on this point as the teleporter still becomes active by Harmonic, keeping presence on this point. Default gets the pick, and Default with a triple kill here and a nano boost, trying to go ham in the back line and cleaning up on this cowboy.
and has another dead eye for all of their efforts so this is going to be last fight territory and this is where the picks have to matter quinnipiac does not have ultimates right now they're going to have to get raw kills in order to take control of this point and they have 15 seconds to do that even if they're able to capture this point maris college is gonna have a lot of time left in the bank and now you're looking for that rotation. The Photon Barrier, again, going to be active. This is a nice play here by Quinnipiac, dropping down to the point to try and start taking the first tick. Even exchange one-to-one, -one, but you do have Goo out of the fight. Not that tanky sustain that they would like, competing now four-to-four -four on the point. Rotation with that Teleporter is critical to use as a Sleep Dart now comes out onto Face Misk and needs to be maintained. The energy strategically high with all of those barriers. Now Default gets one, looks for the double. That just might be enough once again. The Triple comes through, Default being the MVP that might just allow this to be the first in the return sweep for Marist to come back against Quinnipiac, and they are going to be able to do it. Marist claims this map of Hanamura to take it to another map. Reverse sweep might be it coming here. Marist looked like a very different team, and Default rightfully getting this play of the game here. Look at it in its glory, as it's going to be a double, looks for the triple. Doesn't manage to get it here, but there's the cleanup. I like the up, oh, the melee, there it is. I was saying, it's gotta be coming soon. I was hoping we would get it in that play of the game, but seriously, what a great job by Marist coming out on top for this round. And we are going to actually see, because on Monday, we didn't get to see a fourth map. It was three wins in a row for each of the teams. So this is the first time we'll be able to at least get to see in these playoffs, a hybrid map after Assault. And it's going to be Quinnipiac's choice as well. Um, mm -hmm. So th that actually gives them a pretty significant advantage. B being able to pick a map that they're really comfortable with, they might have a strategy that Maris College just isn't ready for. No, not at all. And again, going into this next map, which is again going to be a hybrid, a selection between Eichenwald, Kings Row, Nubani, and Blizzard World. So there is a plethora of opportunity here from Quinnipiac to select. And before we allow that selection to come through, we are going to go to one more break before we bring you this fourth, fourth map and see if Marist can continue this morale boost. I'd like me to sell, sir. Wait, Bud Light made a seltzer? I wonder what it tastes like. Only one way to find out. What are the taste buds saying? Tastes great. Just hard seltzer with a hint of fruit flavor. Let's get that instead. Wait, 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 wait. Post Malone doesn't drink seltzer. We drink Bud Light. Everybody knows that. Why not try something new? Bud Light. Seltzer. Guys, let's get both. I'll get both. Bud Light seltzer. Unquestionably good. Bravo team moving to checkpoint. Two o'clock, ten feet up the right. Visual three o'clock. Sometimes the front lines are in our own backyard. Make a difference in your community, serving part time in the Army National Guard. How do you move the world? Begin with an education that combines a life of the mind with a life of service. Add a campus whose proximity to New York City makes it a global gateway. Include more than 60 degree programs and countless internship opportunities. Mix in a brand new institute for entrepreneurship and top it off with over 80 clubs and a division one sports program. So how do you move the world? Start at Iona College.
Hello and welcome back once again as we go into our first fourth map. And I am actually thrilled to see if we're going to have Marist manage to take this reverse sweep Necra. And we're going on to King's Row. Uh, one of my favorite maps and a favorite of many teams. King's Row is just a class act in terms of compositions that you can run and wonky strategies. You thought the Symmetra Strat on Hanamura was cool. There's a really cool Symmetra Strat for King's Row as well. Oh, definitely. And it's really synergizing well with a Bastion play. We've seen it a lot in other compositions where you typically take the Symmetra on top of that statue with a Sigma combination. But with it being a lot more relevant recently, a lot of teams have been able to adjust and acclimate to this playing on the opposite side of the hotel or managing a halt to happen just onto the Sigma to prevent the barrier from maintaining coverage for that Bastion. So it's going to be interesting as we do have Quinnipiac on the attacking side first teams have swapped and we will keep default in from Marist. Yeah, so no no changes to the rosters, but changes to the sides. And interestingly enough, there is a Symmetra on the defense. That's not a very common strategy that we get a chance to see, but Harmonix really likes us projectile heroes really performing well on the May and showing a lot of prowess on the Symmetra as well. And something that Symmetra does really well, specifically in tandem with Face Misk that's going to be playing the Zarya, Delete Shields. And you do have Taze already getting one here onto Savage, a follow-up by default. And that is a great early defensive hold here as Marist really just has to play back, has to look for that quick respawn. And this is going to be a good possible minute already shredded off the clock with those early picks and ult percentage gain. Ult percentage is, is going to be really important for the defense to be able to continue their hold. Um, but also getting these early picks is one way to continue that hold too. And you see the pressure applied on the front side. Goo on this Zarya, which we've not seen as much today. Trying to synergize well with Zook on the front. Trying to have presence on the point. Tay's going to get very low on this front side with that. Reinhardt has to fall back. Both tanks going down. And this is an opportunity for Quinnipia to move in as you have Grub cleaning up in the back. Yeah, it's really just harmonics in ohm right now for Maris College. That's kind of the last couple of hopes here. Whereas as soon as that main tank went down and as soon as you also kind of removed the DPS pressure as well from Marist, Quinnipiac was able to come in and really take control of this point. Last second contest though. Ooh, gonna get the corner. The Photon Barrier comes out and actually allows some survival with that separation of the team as the Earth Shatter does get one by the statue. Default takes down another and a cleanup, stopping the completion just before at 97.3%. That's why the Symmetra ends up being so important and why I was looking at it as a defensive choice, uh, as a positive defensive choice. The Teleporter allowing the Marist College to come back just in the nick of time to stop the full capture from Quinnipiac. Um, but now they really only have the Sound Barrier and this Deadeye. Deadeye leading it. The Coalescence getting a lot of damage on default, though. Nice save by the supports in the back as Harmonic gets a double here with default. Both of these DPS from Marist working so well together because there is so much space gained by the tanks. The communication is there. Uh, you saw the Deadeye activate, and then the whole team pressure down the Reinhardt shield in order to make sure that the Deadeye would connect. Uh, I really like the communication that we're seeing from Marist College. It's making this defense so strong. And once again, the grab comes out on the backside. Teleporter is there to actually get members out of the grab. What a beautiful usage of the teleport with default rotating behind the statue, trying to take down Broccoli. The 1v1 duel in the back line as Broccoli wants to outmaneuver that McCree. And all the while, you have Marist cleaning up on the point and bringing this to a minute left for Quinnipiac to try and finish this point. Riptire. Earth Shatter, Sound Barrier, 
that's what Quinnipiac has online for this potential last fight. They're taking their time to figure out how they're going to approach this point because these Symmetra turrets are making it very difficult for anyone from Quinnipiac to touch without taking significant amounts of damage. Riptire rotating around the back. Sound Barrier is quickly activated in a nice response by Harmonic as the grab comes through to try and pull multiple members of Quinnipiac together. Harmonix with a Earth Shatter up front by the Ryan play manages to knock down both supports. The sweep Sweep of the hammer claims two, and that is 25 seconds left for Quinnipiac, despite this team fight, has only one final attempt. Last second change here, as the Riptire was a, a whiff, uh, we will see Matt Muskie going over to the Ash just as a last second chance to build up to a Bob and get a seventh member in this fight, but oh. Anti needs. Pressure. Beautiful, beautiful play with the nade going to force back two with face misc getting a triple and what a solid hold from Marist. A solid hold and they are rewarded with the fact that they only need to capture one. Uh, they, they have to catch the point uh, because of how well Quinnipiac was able to get through first two points. But there's not much map to cover here for King's Row. No, there really isn't. And honestly, there is a tall order here for Quinnipiac with how well Marist just played this map. And you can tell that they are strong with this Symmetra play here and yeah. how critical it was. And you mentioned it earlier to have that gap close with the teleporter, allowing that recontest at 97.3%. Those critical decisions and maintaining of those characters allow this type of recontest. And now for the defensive side, you're going to actually see a extremely interesting combo position with default on the bastion or correction that's the attack the defensive side here is actually going to be sigma and ryan as the tank light up and matt is going to stick with a torbjorn i think the torbjorn could play a very similar role to the symmetra in terms of like a, a, having the turret there so, uh, torbjorn falls under that class of heroes that really acts to check to the communication and the team strategy uh in synergy of the opposing team so maris college is still going to have to to figure out kind of how to deal with the turret that's in the back line that gets a chance to act as just a seventh member of the team but here's that bastion symmetra strategy that we were talking about let's see where they go it will it prevail looking to now see if it can come out on top the sigma throws the shield just falling down the damage boost with the mercy hoping to shred those shields quick enough now the rotation is key here early pick though by face misc onto zook but it's exchange back and forth default does take down grub nobody able to focus the bastion on that statue and really trying to play this corner one tick obtained here by marist the res coming out but default is now down this has now been dislodged by quinnipiac in their focus and holding strong to reset but still one tick obtained in the first 45 seconds is still a win in marist attempt they are supposed to get their strategy though so Marist is abandoning the Bastion strategy, going for more of the classic composition that we saw on the defense, waiting for the damage that they took to kind of reset here and moving in fast with that speed. Unbelievable acceleration through. Default gets one. The Shatter comes through to the side. Not going to find any value as Harmonix takes down Matt. The DPS falling short for Quinnipiac as this second point is nearing a pick. With two minutes and 45 seconds, the time is so in favor of Marist, forcing back Quinnipiac. The photon barrier comes out. Is the Moira able to even contest? No, it is not going to happen. And that will be a map four being claimed by Marist, taking us to a potential reverse sweep with a ringer in hand. Two, two. I said this was going to be close, but I didn't think it was going to be this close. Going to a map 5 for the first time, going to a map 4 for the first time, and now a map 5 for the first time in the 2020 MAC Esports Playoff Bracket. I'm so excited, Rich. And I am really curious to see how this next map is going to go, because if we remember from the beginning, the control map did go very closely between these two. It wasn't heavily favored in one or the other. So now that we're revisiting a control map, this really could go either way. It really could go either way. I have no idea how this one's going to go or what map is going to get picked, um, but it is going to be Quinnipiac's choice. So they still have that upper hand in that way. 
Yes, and it is going to be either Li Zhang Tower or Nepal. So we will go to one last break here before we see the climactic match between both Quinnipiac and Marist in just a few moments, friends. always say just be yourself but who is that anyway we are st peter's university a place where students who are eager to learn are taught by people who care on a campus designed for both to thrive we're proud to offer incredible learning opportunities and life-changing experiences and that means our students are prepared to succeed in their fields in their communities and all over the world. Get to know St. Peter's University, the Jesuit University of New Jersey. Bud Light made a seltzer? Wait, Bud Light made a seltzer? I wonder what it tastes like. Only one way to find out. What are the taste buds saying? Tastes great. Just hard seltzer with a hint of fruit flavor. Let's get that instead. Wait, 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 wait. Post Malone doesn't drink seltzer. We drink Bud Light. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Why not try something new? Bud Light. Seltzer. Guys, let's get both. I'll get both. Bud Light Seltzer. Unquestionably good. Bravo team moving to checkpoint. Two o'clock, 10 feet up the right. Visual three o'clock. Sometimes the front lines are in our own backyard. Make a difference in your community, serving part-time in the Army National Guard. People always say, just... Doesn't it seem like the harder you work and the more you earn, you're less likely to receive financial... Care is built into the culture at Niagara University. I really see it in all the professors here. How are you not going to approach teaching that way when the university, at its core, is about caring and compassion? To be a Catholic Jesuit university means we are charged with this education for justice. Students are leaving here with the skill set, the critical thinking, all of these areas which allow them to be flexible leaders. We're told to go out and set the world on fire and we're given the tools to do that. Expansiveness, adaptability, and depth are hallmarks of the education that you get here. If we do that, we produce graduates that stand apart from anybody else. Rise and shine, people. It's your perfect day. A chance to find inspiration and prepare for the future. To build lasting relationships and push the limit harder than before. This is your today, and it couldn't be more perfect. Until tomorrow, when it happens again. It wasn't until I had the opportunity to do research my freshman year that I knew biochemistry was for me. Having that experience early on gave me the clarity that I needed. It begins with our mission and values. A culture of innovation and collaboration. Achieving a global perspective beyond the classroom. Turning education and theory into practice. Developing lifelong interests and connections and striving to make a difference in our communities. Marist College. It begins with our mission and values. A culture of innovation and collaboration. Achieving a global perspective beyond the classroom. Turning education and theory into practice. 
developing lifelong interests and connections, and striving to make a difference in our communities. Marist College. It begins with our Hello and welcome back once again, everybody, as we are now going into our control map for this final point in this best of five. And Necra, this is really not something that we expected, but kind of expected in our first game to start the semifinals off. Well, the first game was so close that mm -hmm. a score line of 2-2 is definitely not out of the question, but that King's Row was pretty decisive for Marist College. It really was. I mean, and the fact that we're going to be able to see Oasis again, I misspoke earlier, those between the Lijiang Tower and Nepal were tiebreaker control maps. So again, it is still from the original pool of control, which is Oasis, Elios, and Busan. We will be able to revisit this once again and see if Marist is able to adjust and acclimate to how uh, the play happened the first time around against Quinnipiac and if they can turn it around. It's going to be a battle of the high ground. We've gotten a chance to see Default in action after being switched in um, for Emerald. And they do play a very similar hero pool to what Grub does on Quinnipiac. So it's going to be very interesting to see who takes control of the high ground, especially if we go to um, university. Uh, I, I just don't know how things are going to go. Mm -hmm. It's really going to be up in the air as a whole. I mean, one of the things that, you know, I would like to see that the gardens map, which we actually didn't get to see much from Quinnipiac earlier in the week. It was the first time they've actually had to play on it going into the semifinals. And they actually did a very stellar job on it mm -hmm. and managed that high ground position. The only thing that was a little bit concerning is that a lot of the play from goo was a little bit separated from the rest of the team, which I yes. felt allowed Maris to really capitalize on that. And I think I would really like to see that cleaned up to go into this one. And it's going to be universal first yeah so battle of the high ground here battle of the point you've got your favorite spot in the middle of the map <laughs> um <laughs> uh, but you know the the biggest the biggest question mark that i have is 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 exactly what you mentioned can matt muskie and can goo can they play more together with the team because i feel as though being out of position is something that default's going to be able to take extreme advantage of or, yes. or harmonics. Yeah, it's very true. And the fact that you've got that player change is really going to adjust the, I think, responsiveness from Quinnipiac because with, with Goo and Matt pulling back the reins a little bit, I think that's going to cause more difficulty for default finding that damage around specific corners or channels in this map, which is going to allow Marist to accelerate and outmaneuver Quinnipiac. Well, both teams are utilizing a Lucio, so they're going to be able to rush to point very, very quickly. Uh, both of them, uh, at least seeing, ooh, yep, yeah, that that's kind of what I was talking about. Ooh. Default being able to get get one off the off the get go. Yep, right at the get go, getting that kill, and now Matt is going to have to just quickly try and regroup. This point is most likely going to go in favor of Marist and allow it to be taken. These few seconds critical. You might actually get Matt back here in time to try and compete, throwing some damage over the wall as dropping down severs the team. You've got the Maywall in the back by Harmonic, but still, here comes that follow through from Marist and taking the point with default, really just pumping out damage in the back uncontested once again. So, point takes control of by Marist College, and there has to be an extreme backup here by Quinnipiac. Something, though, that Quinnipiac did really, really well in that last fight was actually deny face mist a lot of charge. They avoided those bubbles really expertly, but Goo now <laughs> just taking care of the problem. Oh, man, managing to now get an opportunity of the numbers advantage. Matt going to be heavily unleashing damage from that high ground along with Grub. Beautiful change over here. What a quick response to how Marist was playing that fight before and sweeping them off this point. 
Ooh, and now the point taking, taken over very, very quickly here by Quinnipiac too. So this is going to be a pretty big back and forth. Uh, there's not too many differences in the ultimate economy yet. Uh, Marist College is going to have the Blizzard as well as the Deadeye. And Quinnipiac is going to have a Deadeye of their own very shortly here with that whole hog, the Earth Shatter, as well as the Nano Boost. So it's just about utilizing those tools first. Rotating around, face miss, getting aggressed on by the Junkrat from Matt, but a nice pickoff early. Blizzard trying to isolate a few, does get Broccoli. That is a huge pickup to reduce this mobility and area of effect healing with Harmonix taking another. 30% in climbing for Quinnipiac, and that is now going to spell disaster as the wall separates the last few supports remaining with a Deadeye going to come out by Grub. I feel that could have been held onto and used in this next fight. I agree. I definitely agree with that one. Grub could have utilized it, but there might also not have just been a better opportunity. Um, maybe to just see whether or not members of their team would come back in time in order to take advantage of potential picks that they would get with the Deadeye. But now they, they still have tools to hold on to. And especially when you're running high charge DPS heroes, it's not too bad to utilize those early. No, it's not. And now you have an early double kill with the whole hog from Goo in the back, repositioning multiple members default, holding on to that Deadeye to try and find an opportunity of picking somebody off. It will not get any value here, though. The wall does separate two in the back line, and an Earth Shatter comes out, but default is there to respond, taking down the big man with the hammer on the front as a flanking Shatter comes in around the back from Marist, hopefully trying to continue this climb in percentage. And at this point, that's what Marist wants. They need to get to that 99% even if they do force out, so they've got some time to work with, and Goo cleaning up the last couple of members to switch it back over. I don't know if the sound barrier was necessary there either, though, if I'm if I'm going to be completely honest, because that's a tool that they could have utilized for sustain going into this next fight as an engagement tool. Mm -hmm. um, especially when you're looking at the sound barrier that is active for Quinnipiac, uh, Broccoli is going to be able to use that as a response mechanism to face Mist's Graviton Surge, which Marist is likely relying on to get back into this fight. Ooh, even exchange for the DPS, both Ryans on the front, Bionade going to land onto two, though, from Quinnipiac, and the Grav comes they give a lot of fortification to really survive through it as Grub comes up from the side. But this Blizzard and just reposition from Marist actually going to allow a great engage and taking this back, stripping the percentage and stopping that opportunity here for Quinnipia. But Matt going to dive in to try and keep it for a percentage or two more as it switched back from 84. Maywall going to stop a little bit of the momentum there from what we're, we, we would see from Quinnipiac, but they've got some fast heroes to try to get back to point. High Noon from Default in the back, going to get takedown onto Grub, the Tracer hoping to get the kill before the ultimate completes. Overtime shredding away, and Marist now taking first map so far in Oasis on University. So close, though. So it was. close, Rich. That was a 100 to 84 score line for that very first map. Uh, and we're going into the second round and here's where again, high ground becomes uh, ever more important because you have beautiful sight lines here for something like McCree. Oh, very much. And again, I do really want to highlight how Quinnipiac is really, really going to have to tighten up with Goo on this back line again. I think if they can do that, as we talked about it earlier on this map, that will allow a completion in their favor to bring it to that third map, which they are most formidable on in that city center. Going to meet in the middle here. Uh, I, I really like the the choice to kind of stick with the junk wrap, but again, you got to watch out for those Zarya bubbles. Shield and bubble active early. You've got ties on the front with the Reinhardt trying to push in. The wall does separate some of the team. Matt out in the open. Is anybody able to get the kill? On to Matt. Finally does. Default gets the kill. And you have a Dix versus four right now in favor of Marist and forcing Quinnipiac back. And once again, exerting a lot of dominance here. I love the disengage, though, from Quinnipiac. They're really denying Marist College a lot of ultimate charge uh, so that they won't have the Coalescence. They're not going to be able to have the Deadeye early on in these fights where it might buy Quinnipiac some time in order to get some quick picks to, to kick things off so that they can take control of this point back. It wouldn't be too unheard of in this position knowing what we saw on round one of oasis for this second time that we're seeing it to see quinnipiac come back in full force 
Zook on the low ground with the Ryan. Hook comes out early getting Harmonix, but a great coverage shield from the Zarya. Taking down one for both sides. Matt trying to unload damage as the Mayhem actually gets some great damage onto Ty as the switch over on the point. The rotation comes through by Quinnipiac and Broccoli giving some great assistance with Grub to shut down the last few members of Marist. This is what Quinnipiac University's comp does really well. Chunks down shields, chunks down health on heroes, and then gets them to the point where every single member of Quinnipiac can turn and focus fire. Now, Quinnipiac has control of this point, and they're about to meet the percentage that Maris College had. 25% in climbing. Coalescence leading in by... Oh, beautiful shatter, though, by Zook as the grab tries to return the opportunity of completing this fight in favor of Marist. But despite the ultimates used, you will see a great response from Quinnipiac collapsing onto those ultimates and taking advantage of Marist. I love the way that Quinnipiac has decided to position themselves. Look at Goo waiting in the wings in order to take out Default. But Default switched things up now. Not going to be as squishy of a hero or as easy of a target anymore being on the Reaper. You could just wraith form away from these Roadhog hooks, but you know, just get stuck in a trap. Yeah, the trap's gonna give some visibility as he just tries to get chased by the rip tire. Nice shield coverage though, by face on the front to keep the Ryan alive as the whole hog finds a flanking position once again. The sound barrier trying to survive. Grub with the triple and looking to just completely remove every other member. You see that jump off the edge from Maris to say, I'm not even gonna give any more ult charge here, friends. Now we're in last fight territory too, so you might not have been able to give up too much ultimate charge, but Quinnipiac just utilized the Earth Shatter as a defensive mechanism two fights ago, as Zook already has the Earth Shatter back for this next fight, where what kind of tools does Maris College have yet? Oh, they oh. just gotta get picks. And now you've got Grub following up immediately after, both with Matt and Grub dominating on the front side. The overtime commences, but this is heavily in favor of Quinnipiac, and we were saying it earlier, the Roadhog grouping was critical to survive through this and a flank when necessary allows this to go into a third map of oasis we are going the mile friends we really are going the distance both of these teams are so evenly matched that this is just a repeat of the history that we saw the first time we got a chance to see oasis maris taking one quinnipiac taking one and it all comes down to this to see who's going to move on to the grand finals it's it's so exciting, and I'm hoping that this intensity continues through the remainder of the day because we have so much more ahead, and we are going to see between Quinnipiac and Marist who continues to move forward as this last city center map has it all on the line, and I'm curious to see if Default is going to stick with this McCree because the Reaper play really didn't yield much value in that Gardens map. Well, unfortunately, there wasn't too much value to, to be had because Quinnipiac was just making sure to deny the value that Default was getting on the, the heroes, whether it was McCree or the Reaper. So you, you just have to make sure that you stick together as a team so that you don't get caught off guard because Goo is hunting down Default right now. And Goo still keeping some distance from the team again, has to play this carefully, does not want to get caught out. The high ground still being maintained by Marist, waiting to drop once the control point does become active, contesting and rotating around. Nice job, but Matt, along with Goo, flanking around the backside, hoping to get some value. Default unable to be picked off here by Goo, which we've seen the time before, and that damage is going to continue and force back Quinnipiac as Zook has a long way to charge back in this. Yeah, this is going to be a first take by Marist College. Um, I really want to shout out the supports here from Marist. They have been doing so much work in order to keep this team healthy. It's not just the DPS that are popping off, but the fact is that Vocal and Ohm are doing fantastic jobs on the Moira and the Lucio, respectively. Those are not easy heroes, especially with how much skill, like how just the high the skill ceiling goes for something like a Lucio. Uh, and and I, I just want to give them a lot of credit here. Now moving in, you've got Matt taking that high ground position with the concussion mine. Double kill from default though, in the rotation on the back line, looking for the Moira and the Lucio, but can't seem to get the pick. But the fact that you have default forcing the supports away, no one is left to be healed on the front. Yeah. This is a, a tough spot. This is really where the high ground becomes the most important. It's like kind of we've worked our way up to this point. And 
how is Quinnipiac going to be able to approach this? They're going to have to take a very similar approach to what Maris College did when they saw themselves in this position, uh, when it, it was reversed. Um, and Quinnipiac is just going to have to try to get default off of this high ground. There's just too many angles, and here's that rotation coming through. And you've got default now going to drop from the high ground, not going to want to compete. The Blizzard comes through, a collapse here in the back as you have the Coalescence as well, and what a significant amount of damage and coordination to now I'll bring this to a final fight as that team kill bell rings once again. Final fight, and there's a Graviton Surge and an Earth Shatter online and waiting for Maris College with a Sound Barrier and a Dead Eye soon to follow. That might just be everything that Maris College needs to take this from 0 to 100 and be our first grand finalist. Oh, hook on to Harmonix is an opening, but the fact that Default still gets the double is very critical. Now the triple Default weighing the oh but the riptire manages to shut it down so this is still an opportunity to try and rotate back onto the point here for quinnipiac they are at a zero percent to 99 here as the numbers advantage are still in favor of maris that sound barrier will allow a lot of fortification to survive through this damage as the rest of quinnipiac rush to this point dead eye from grub trying to find a pick around that center building can't manage to get the value as the earth shatter from zook comes in the back dead eye at least getting one onto the lucio around the corner the overtime commences default on the Tracer now, in desperation to prevent this from being taken back as the numbers advantage go in favor of Quinepi. And they will look to try and take this down, but the main from Harmonix still competing. Grub cleaning up, and this could be a switch over and finally manages to once you do have the main brought off the point. Huge switch over here. Now Quinnipiac has their work cut out for them, though. They have to go 0 to 100, just like Marist College was almost able to do. Broccoli, though, smartly holding onto the sound barrier, tracking the fact that Harmonix is going to have the Blizzard online, and there's also going to be a coalescence. So that sound barrier is going to have to hit very hard in this next fight in order to keep Quinnipiac University in this one. Face Misk just really waiting to get some charge here from those barriers before pressing forward again. Harmonix has that win condition Blizzard and needs to be ready for it to be, but Broccoli has to respond. Matt funneling a lot of damage into that doorway as a hook comes out early onto the Lucio, and that is not what Marist wants. That's not what they want at all. This is going to make this fight for Maris really tough, but it looks like they're still going to commit. Yeah, and you have Goo flanking from behind. The Coalescence going to be active and the Blizzard for this fight. The barrier brought out again by Facemist to keep ties alive. Default goes down by Grub. The Cowboy v. Cowboy in favor of Quinnipia. And you have Goo just forcing back the remaining members. And now the shoe is on the other foot and Marist is in final fight territory. If Maris College can get back fast enough, we might be able to see a second fight here, but as it stands, the way that the staggers happened, this might very well be the final fight. Graviton Surge versus what Quinnipiac has and the Riptire, the Whole Hog. There's so many ultimates online. The ultimate economy is definitely in Quinnipiac's favor. The hook comes through. There's the pick by Matt, managing to get the support out of the fight as the Riptire comes over the wall. Doesn't get much value as Default gets the pick. Hook on the front line again by Goo as Face Mist throws the grab out near the projectile. The boop gonna come out, but you will have Mars able to get the massive amount of kills. It's only going to be Zook and Matt forcing to this Doomfist has to get back with this respawn. Last few seconds as you have Goo now going to the Wrecking Ball to try and touch this point. You gotta be able to touch this point. Doofus is gonna be able to get there, but there is a Deadeye waiting for the rest of the members of Quinnipiac University. They weren't able to use their ultimates here, and it's just gonna be stalls coming through. Lucio rounding the inner side as the High Noon comes out with the Coalescence by Savage. This is still a tall order, but the fact that the Lucio is rounding the middle manages to buy at least enough time for a potential regroup with a fall. Solid six as the me- Oh, the Earth Shatter with the Blizzard going to stack up here for Maris over Quinnipiac as the overtime starts to go in favor of Marist. The Wrecking Ball rounding the center. The Doofus by Matt hoping to try and pray that they can manage to get through this. They are not wanting to leave the semifinals. They want to move into the grand finals, but it will not happen. Marist managing to shut them out with a reverse sweep in this best of five and enter into the grand finals. What an exciting match between these two teams. The fact is, Quinnipiac looked so solid at the very beginning of the set, but Maris was able to turn everything around. The reverse sweep came in through, and it was such a fantastic match to watch. I mean, let's even just look at that clean, clean fight here with 
face misc on that Zarya. The grab gonna come out cleaning up, but honestly, through this first match in the semifinals, you have to commend both of these teams giving it their all and bringing us quite a match to watch. What an absolutely stellar fight between these two, and it's only going to get better, friends. I mean, Necra, is, is this what we want? This is what we want, I think. <laughs> this is what we want. We want a full good day of Overwatch, and the first two teams we got a chance to see already kicked it off so well. And with that match being completed, we do have the next coming up between. It is going to be Sienna versus St. Peter's. And we do have a slight break here coming up so those two teams can be organized and enter into their semifinal best of five. And before we go, we do want to give some serious shout out and thanks. The Mac would like to take this opportunity to thank this its partner, New Jersey Army National Guard, whose members are fighting on the front lines in this battle against COVID-19. The MAC thanks you for your service and your partnership and truly appreciate all of those out there. So don't go anywhere, friends. We have more Overwatch to come in the semifinals to see who will be competing against Marist in this grand finals. Bravo team moving to checkpoint. Two o'clock, 10 feet up the right. Visual three o'clock. Sometimes the front lines are in our own backyard. Make a difference in your community, serving part-time in the Army National Guard. I'd like me to sell, sir. Wait, Bud Light made a seltzer? I wonder what it tastes like. Only one way to find out. What are the taste buds saying? <laughs> tastes great. Just hard seltzer with a hint of fruit flavor. Let's get that instead. Wait, 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 wait. Post Malone doesn't drink seltzer. We drink Bud Light. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Why not try something new? Bud Light. Seltzer. Guys, let's get both. I'll get both. Bud Light seltzer. Unquestionably good. To be a Catholic Jesuit university means we are charged with this education for justice. Students are leaving here with the skill set, the critical thinking, all of these areas which allow them to be flexible leaders. We're told to go out and set the world on fire and we're given the tools to do that. Expansiveness, adaptability, and depth are hallmarks of the education that you get here. If we do that, we produce graduates that stand apart from anybody else. What is up, everybody? We are back here from that lovely short break as we are actually able to speak to one of the amazing captain members, Harmonix from Marist. And again, this post-game interview is powered by Acer Predator. Let's just talk about this last this last uh, series that we just had here. I mean, Necra, that was absolutely exciting. We are so grateful to have you here, Harmonix. How is your team feeling going into this and now entering into the grand finals? team is ecstatic we've been working so hard for this so we're really ready to take it all i mean with how this was playing it was intense from start to finish this was not just a quick turnover 3-0 type of match and what helped you as your team persevere after losing the first two matches and completely reversing this taking the last three after losing the first two we realized our mistakes for sure and we talked about it and just got back into the right mental state and fixed up our mistakes, capitalized, communicated, and just worked together as a team. It, what do you feel like was giving you the biggest trouble for Quinnipiac University? Uh, definitely say that the flankers and just coming in unexpectedly was just a surprise for us. And we didn't really handle it too well at first, but definitely in the end, we got a hold of it. And it was a beautiful job. Well done. And now going into, you know, the grand finals, you're still waiting to see who your opponent is. What kind of things are you going to bring from this best of five into that grand finals to help continue this type of coordination and momentum? What do you think that you can take from just this recent game and apply it to the next one? We're going to keep up the aggression, keep up the comms and just work together as we have been even better now. And yeah, that's how we're going to take it. 
it seemed like you guys had fin- phenomenal communication. So can you give us some insight onto what that looks like for your team? Uh, for us, so we have um, our tanks mainly taking the lead on that. So uh, Taze and Face Mist taking up the lead for uh, shot calling, target calling, and they do really well on that. And then in the background, we have the supports calling who they're on, healing, who they're nading, what they're doing, and all around, everyone's just communicating what they're doing, but still focusing on the main calls from the tanks. Fantastic to hear it. And again, we do greatly appreciate your time, Harmonix. We know we'll allow you to get a little bit of a break just before going into this Grand Finals. Again, the captain here with us live today from Marist going into the Grand Finals with this interview, again, being powered by Acer Predator. We thank you so very much for your time, Harmonix, as well, like I said, let you go back to your team, continue to celebrate, but then bring yourselves into that competitive mode to try and take this Grand Finals. Definitely. Thank you so much. You're very welcome, my friend. And we'll be back in just a moment, friends, so we can bring you the next game between Siena and St. Peter's. Bravo team moving to checkpoint. Two o'clock, 10 feet off the right. Visual three o'clock. Sometimes the front lines are in our own backyard. Make a difference in your community, serving part-time in the Army National Guard. Seltzer? Wait, Bud Light made a seltzer? I wonder what it tastes like. Only one way to find out. What are the taste buds saying? It tastes great. Just hard seltzer with a hint of fruit flavor. Let's get that instead. Wait, 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 wait. Post Malone doesn't drink seltzer. We drink Bud Light. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Why not try something new? Bud Light. Seltzer. Guys, let's get both. I'll get both. Bud Light seltzer. Unquestionably good. 